I feel like I'm about to meet a raid boss right now and fight him. And I have like no consumables. <sighs> hey guys, it's Mecha Mermaid. I wanted to talk to you today about something that I didn't really want to have to talk to people about. But the reason I'm talking about it is because when I first found out I experienced paralysis in my body and was finding out how my body has changed, I went to YouTube to try and find someone that is going through the same thing as I am. And I just found no one that I could relate to. Most of the videos I found were by disabled males and, uh, as we all know, the female body is a lot different. So the purpose of this video today is so if someone is experiencing the same things that I'm experiencing right now, they can find a video and they can find me and maybe I can help them relate to someone. I feel ashamed about how my body behaves sometimes and I feel shamed by the community. Um, I feel a lot of ableism that I didn't even, like before that accident, I didn't think that was a real thing. Like I thought people treated people with disabilities like better than they would treat normal people. But the world is, is just not like that. And I've experienced ableism in so many different ways. It's gotten to the point where I sometimes I'm scared to leave the house because I'm I have no idea what my body is gonna do that day. I just wanted to talk to you about the changes that my body has gone through since the the accident and because of my disability. The first thing I noticed about my body right after the accident is that I couldn't feel below my knee. I couldn't feel in my feet. I couldn't feel my ankles. I can't feel the backs of my legs all the way down. I can feel the front of my legs. I feel my, the tops of my thighs, like where my quads are. And I can feel like my shins. After a while, I realized that I had no feeling in my vagina or my butt. They are completely paralyzed. I noticed this because when I was in the hospital, they had to catheterize me uh, to make me have to go pee because I couldn't do it on my own and I didn't feel the catheter going into me. So that's when I realized that I had no feeling. This is so hard to talk about, but I really feel like if I had someone that I knew that was going through the same thing that I was going through, I would feel a lot more confident about my body and less ashamed. One of the most important things that happened to me is that I'm no longer to, able to feel my clit I can't orgasm, I can't clench the muscles in my vagina or my butt. That has taken the biggest toll on me, I think. Even though I can't walk on my own, um, the fact that I can't experience like sexual pleasure from my clit uh, has really taken a toll on my psyche. When I was looking up YouTube videos, I was trying to find a video that would talk about like how you could get someone with a spinal cord injury that was a woman to have an orgasm. There was so much um, information about male orgasms and males having sex. I guess like if you have a spinal cord injury and you're male, um, maybe your, your, uh, your wiener can't uh, get hard. So you get like an implant or something, but, um, and even if you like, if you stimulate it enough, I guess you can actually get your dick to come if you have a, a spinal cord injury in your male. But with a female, you know, that's like completely different. So I can feel the inside of my vagina, like if I'm being penetrated, or, it's just not the same feeling. I actually don't think that that is the hardest thing to talk about. Um, the next thing I'm about to talk about is probably the hardest thing for me. With my paralysis, it's really weird because I'm an incomplete at the T12 level. So that means that I suffered bruising and I'm not exactly sure, but like my spinal cord was kind of crushed basically. So um, 
if you were complete, it means that the spinal cord was like severed at that level and you wouldn't be able to feel below like a certain spot on your body. But I can feel like really strange places on my body and I can still move like my left ankle. I can kind of move, which maybe I can show you, but I can do this. My foot is like really dusty and hairy, <laughs> but I can do that on my right foot. I have nothing. I can't do anything. My bladder and my bowels um, just don't function properly. I can't, like I said, I can't use the muscles in my vagina to contract. There's like a sphincter in your urethra that like closes and opens when you have to pee and when you're not peeing it's supposed to be closed but mine just doesn't like do either. At the beginning of this whole ordeal I had to catheterize all the time because I just couldn't I just couldn't go by myself and eventually I taught myself that if I'm sitting on the toilet and I like push with my abs and stuff like I just push like as if you were to pee but it's different and it just like pushes on my bladder and allows me to pee but there's no way for me to like stop it really <laughs> this is really hard to talk about but like I I just feel like someone needs to talk about it like you shouldn't feel alone the same thing with my bowels, like there's no muscle that contracts so that I just like can hold the doo-doo in. With this has come like some accidents, which is like probably the most mortifying thing you can experience as like a person, like a young person, an old person, like the fact that you don't have control over your body just makes you feel like so much lesser of a human and it's like really embarrassing when that happens and there's people around or even if you're by yourself and that happens it's just like you feel so out of control of what's happening and it's really scary so I've only had like a few accidents which is like thanks Jeebus thanks Pikachu thanks mom thanks dad when they happen, I feel like really, really shitty. What I do to minimize this is I, tr I go every four hours. I go, if I feel like I have to go, even though I just went, I'll have to like go pee. What I found that triggers it, which is really strange, is if I drink a beer, like I'll drink even one beer and I'll just like start peeing myself, which is like really, I don't, I don't understand. You have to wear like a panty liner in your underwear every day because your bladder is just constantly leaking like little droplets. It's not like a lot, sometimes it can be, but for the most part it's like manageable. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to talk about the other one, but like may as well because we're here. So. Um, you also have to develop like a bowel routine because like if you don't try and poo you could like have an accident during the day. I'm trying to think of the word it's called. I just realized I'm not wearing any lipstick. Uh, today we're gonna go for a uh, pinky nude. And it will be um, Smashbox's um, Posy Pink in the shade Pink. I shouldn't do that, it's gonna break. <laughs> Oops. Oops. I'm dropping things. Stop! Stop with the dropping. With a bowel routine, you need to, at least I need to disinfect myself like once or twice a day. And 
if you don't know what that means, you don't need to know. You can go Google it. Like, I'm not going to talk about it. Okay, I'm done. I don't want you to feel alone. I don't want you to feel ashamed of your body. I don't want you to feel like it's your fault. It's not your fault. You're not any less of a human. You're beautiful. I will always be here. If you want to talk to someone, like, you can message me. I'll message you back because it's really important to me that people going through this don't have to experience like sheer terrifying loneliness and that they can't relate to anyone because it fucking sucks. They've prescribed psychologists to talk to me and the one they prescribed to me was like this old, like really old white man that just didn't make me feel like I could talk to him, like I didn't relate to him at all. It was just the classic, like, how do you feel? Like, how does this make you feel? It made me scared to see another psychologist, which I haven't done because I was like, I can do a way better job of managing my stress than this guy who was like, oh, you need to meditate, you need to distract yourself. Like, fucking obviously, dude. Like. <laughs> I don't think I need a fucking certified psychologist to tell me that I need to distract myself after like my life has been completely changed. After I was in the hospital for two months, um, I got to come home and living where I live, there's not accessible living spaces. All the houses around here have steps going into the main entrance like there's no way around it unless I wanted to live in an apartment building and then I'd have to find one with an elevator which is hard too. I just decided to stay where I was living because I felt like it would be way too hard for me to find a new place, find people to help me move all my stuff, set it all up and I really love the house that I've been living in. To get into my house there's about five or six steps and at this point, I'm able to walk up the steps. If I, if I wear these uh, leg braces in my shoes, and I also need these crutches to walk. I can't walk for that long. I get like really tired in my muscles. Like my hip muscles um, are very, very weak. And my glutes, my butt, all those muscles are like really, really weak. Like a one on the scale of one to 10 of how strong they are. If it's like snowy outside, which it has been for the last three or four months, then I just can't go outside. I've been stuck in my house for the entire winter because if I need to go outside, I need someone to help me get my wheelchair out. There's no ramp going into my house and I can't get my wheelchair out by myself. I can't get it up and down the stairs by myself. Like it's absolutely impossible. So if I want to leave my house, I need someone to help me, which just makes me feel like I'm trapped. Like I, I can't do anything on my own. I have no independence. I have no autonomy. Like I need people to help me with my groceries. I need people to help me take me to the doctor. I need people to help me take me to the gym. When it's like summertime, I can start going to the gym by myself by like walking up the road, which is on a hill, and taking the bus there. And I have to walk about 300 meters total to get to the bus stop and then get to the gym. And then I have to do that on the way back. And that is a lot of walking for me. It makes me just not want to like do it because it's so hard. But if I have someone to come here and like push me in my wheelchair up to the bus stop and like we can go to the gym. It just sucks being stuck in the house and hopefully when the summer comes it'll be a lot easier to like get around and I'll be like way stronger from like going to the gym. <laughs> it takes such a toll on the way you perceive your life like it makes being positive so much harder because you just don't think it's worth it to do all this work just to go outside. So that's basically all I wanted to talk about. If you have a spinal cord injury, even if it's like an old spinal cord injury or a new spinal cord injury, and especially if you're a woman and you just really need to talk to someone about like not experiencing orgasms or not feeling like a woman anymore and just like going through hard times, like I would love to talk to you I would love to find people that are going through the same thing that I am because 
I only know one other person that's kind of close to my age that has a spinal cord injury. But thanks for watching. I'm gonna make a video about being in the hospital. If you wanna like want some some like thrill thrilling tales of like hospital life, then uh, you you can go watch that. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you guys, and I'll talk to you later.